Greetings friends, Goat Mumbler here. Thanks for stopping by the Goat Ranch to see what we're doing out here. And it's a pretty exciting day because this will be the day that I start to build up my Epic 1022 Ruger Steel Challenge Rifle. Hopefully I'll get a chance to do some Steel Challenge this summer. And I've been thinking about this for several months. And thanks to Lawson 11B, he's given me great guidance and a lot of good advice on what to buy, what not to buy, and how to go about this thing. First thing we needed to do was pick out our build list. I've finally gotten all the parts here. Yesterday when I pulled into the driveway, there was the last part of the puzzle, which was my custom Boyd stock. That's all we needed. And today it's raining. So I have a huge list of things that I need to do around here and none of them are gonna get done because that all need to be done outside. So I'm gonna be inside doing this and having just a ton more fun anyway. Obviously, you're gonna have to start out with a 1022. I already have one that we built up a couple years ago and it was a lot of fun. My 1022 tactical rig here, Tapco stock, bipod, nice pro staff, rimfire Nikon, scope, adjustable TAPCO stock. We've done some uh, trigger work to it. And when we're finished building up this rifle, we're gonna do some more work on the other one. So obviously you need a 1022 to start with. I wasn't gonna tear that one apart because I like that rifle. They're not expensive to find, so, or at least I thought so. I've been checking out the forums and some of the local websites. The used ones just aren't out there. The guys that have the used ones want more than new prices. So I finally gave up with that. Really, to do these things, all you need is a receiver, which is the serialized part of the gun. I didn't want an aftermarket receiver, I wanted the Ruger receiver. So, went to the gun show here a couple weeks ago. A buddy of mine spread out. We found the cheapest one we could find. And we ended up with this one. Black synthetic stock, just your basic little flip up sight system, but hey, found a 50th anniversary. Didn't even really know that till I got it home. Got to looking at it. Bonus, $179. So I felt pretty good about that. Everybody's got them stacked up out there in different configurations and everything, uh, but even Walmart doesn't have them for sale for $179. I'd have liked to gotten the wooden stock, but no biggie. So, because we're not, we're not going to be using this stuff. So, let's begin with telling you what we're going to get rid of and what we're going to replace it with. First thing we're going to get rid of is this heavy ass barrel. And we're going to replace it with a Kid Innovative Ultralight fluted and threaded barrel right there. That's gonna be about four and a half ounces difference in weight. We're gonna get rid of the stock trigger group. It'll go in the bag along with the barrel. And we're gonna replace it with a kid single stage drop-in trigger group. We're gonna get rid of this stock and we're gonna replace it with Boyd's Custom thumb hole stock here. Believe it or not, $99.95. I, I, I really don't know how they do that for this price because it's, it's really a piece of work. We're gonna use these pins. We're gonna replace this uh, stock bolt buffer pin with a Kid Innovative aftermarket pin. And we're also going to replace the standard charging handle with a kid charging handle with adjustable springs and a stainless guide rod. Now, as far as this goes, this is going to be a, your box stock, 50th anniversary though, Ruger 1022 bolt and a receiver. When I took this thing apart, 
I noticed this thing was, was bone dry. I'm not talking about a little wet, or I'm not talking about damp. I'm not talking about anything on my fingers. I'm talking about dry as a bone. And you can hear that. Man, I don't know how these things work. I don't know how these things shoot thousands of rounds just like that. I went to the Ruger forum and said, hey, is this kind of normal? And some people say, yeah, well, sometimes they come in dry. Sometimes they come in wet. I'm just going, you know, I, I, I just can't believe that. There's got to be some sort of procedure on the line that, you know, when they cycle this thing, that they're either going to lube it or they're not. I guess I could call Ruger and ask them, but that's kind of where we are. The only lubrication I found on this was with this barrel. And it was where it meets the receiver. And that was at the very, the very end. You can see that there's a little wetness there, but that was the only lube in this entire firearm. So, hey, they've been building them for 50 years. They gotta know what they're doing, right? Okay. The last thing we're gonna use to top this thing off, and I want you to know I, I went to great pains and research to pick out every single piece I wanted on this. And I'm gonna go with the Vortex Spark II Red Dot. It's not a low end, $99.95 cheapie, but it's also not a $500 EOTech or Aimpoint. This thing gets good reviews. As a matter of fact, if you want to see one where one's been kind of abused, uh, go to Scooch, uh, go to his website, check him out. He's, he has got, you know, he's put this thing on, beat the crap out of it, thrown it down. He's done everything but run over it with his car. So you can get those things for about 200 bucks just about anywhere. So that's the one we're going to go with. The, the new 1022 I bought came with a, a rail to mount the optic, so we won't have to go buy that. First thing we do before we get started, and I'm not going to go through every assembly on this, I just want to see, want you to see what I'm using, why I'm using it, but we are going to take this thing apart. We are going to do some uh, polishing and smoothing while we're in there. And I'm going to take it apart and mark the places that we're going to do some work on and tell you why I'm going to do it. Now, I'm not a professional gunsmith, nor do I play one on TV, but I'm going to try to smooth up some areas where there's metal on metal and uh, make this thing a little better. So we'll get this thing disassembled. I'll show you how we're going to do that, and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, we got the receiver apart now. now. I've taken a red sharpie and I'm going to show you some of the places that I'm going to do some polishing. Now there was a, a guy I was watching on the internet a while back and he said he spent 10 hours polishing his receiver. And uh, if he spent 10 hours polishing his receiver then he needs to get a new hobby, get a girlfriend, take up knitting something because that's just, that's just goofy. I took a sharpie and I'm going to show you some of the spots that, that I want to polish which is going to be right here. The bolt really rides uh, or rest on, on this surface on top of the receiver. And that's really about it. it. It It's not supported on both sides. It's only supported on one side. And that, that's this side here. Uh, the hammer engages back here, around this edge here, and slides along there. I'm going to polish that up a little bit, polish this back side up here. Uh, the top top of the bolt here, here, the charging handle rest in there. I'll probably take out this firing pin and go ahead and polish the top of it because it's going to be uh, resting on the, on the charging handle. And go ahead and polish up uh, this area here because that's where the guide rod spring is, or the recoil spring is, is right in there. Okay, these top two surfaces here because when it's cycled back, a lot of times it, it hits up here in the top. I'm not going to do a whole lot of work to the inside of the receiver. I'm going to take some emery cloth and we're going to smooth all this up. Uh, the one area I'm going to give a lot of attention to is this edge on the bottom right in here because that is actually where the bolt is supported. It goes back and forth. Uh, let's see if you can see this any better. I need my lights in a different position. but. 
the bolt slides back and forth here and it rests along the top of this aluminum surface here. So we're going to make sure that's nice and smooth. Uh, it's going to be hard to get a Dremel in there, but I'll, I'll see what we can I'll see what we can do to make that make that work. Strangely enough, this thing, uh, if you've ever spent any time just messing with this, and sitting in the chair, goofing around with it, you'll notice that it's only supported on this on this right side. And with all the sloppy tolerances in there, you just wonder how this thing, you know, works at all. But it does. It works pretty damn good and has been for 50 years. But it is only supported on this one side in the receiver. So up underneath this lip, we're going to make sure we get that pretty smooth. As far as the rest of it, we're just going to take some memory cloth in here, get it all smoothed up, and and uh, make sure it doesn't sound as gritty as it did when I first got it from the box, out of the box. Okay, moving right along with our build, you can see that I've made quite a bit of progress here, and there's a reason for that. I'll explain later. But what we did is we went ahead and got our rail mounted on our receiver, got it Loctited in. We've chosen this particular mounting height for our Vortex Spark 2 red dot. And in dry fitting this in the stock and looking at it, this is the height that we're going to need. It comes uh, with three different mounting heights, uh, all very well built, but it's already mounted on here, ready to go. I've even bore sided this, so we're ready to take it to the range as soon as we get it assembled. But the next thing we're going to do is install our Kit Innovative single stage trigger. It's a complete drop in module. Nothing to do, nothing to lube. Comes just like this, and it's a beauty. So, all we have to do with this is slide it right in the receiver. Two pins. There we go. Get them down flush. There we are. Viola ready to rock. Next thing we'll do, and this is why we've had to move ahead, is we've chosen a Boyd's Custom Blazer model stock for this particular project. And uh, it's a beauty. Believe it or not, it's only $99.95. A few extra bucks for shipping. Only had one problem. I like to dry fit everything just so I'm not wasting everybody's time in doing these videos. So uh, I'm looking at the bolt and I'm going, well, something doesn't look quite right here. Better make sure that bolt goes all the way through here so we can get it mounted up. Man, I'd hate to have this all ready to go and can't mount it to my stock. Well, I'll be darned. Here's the stock bolt. Comes in every Ruger 1022. Some of the older ones are flathead. This one happens to be an Allen head. And it is exactly one inches long. Problem is, we need an inch and a quarter to get up through this hole. So I'm going, no problem. It's Saturday. I ran to, uh, we have a hardware store called Elliott's, and they carry all sorts of off-brand weird stuff, and I knew I'd find it there. So when I went in there and I said, I need one of these, but a quarter inch longer, we spent about 10 minutes, we couldn't even figure out what it was, but they didn't have it. So that got to worrying me. Went to Home Creepo, Lowe's, Gun Shop, couple other stores they said we're, we're not even exactly sure what it is we don't think it's metric but it's not anything that we have so I was really disappointed but I've got patience I didn't have anything in my vast inventory either so I um, went ahead and got to looking on the internet and sure enough on eBay I found a bolt this bolt actually 
inch and a quarter, $4.25. I went ahead and ordered it because I just wanted to have a safety valve. Because come Monday, I took this over to one of my clients who happens to be a large fashioner company. And uh, they said, sorry, you're going to have a hard time finding this. And the reason is because this is a 12. This is a 1224 by one inch. The problem is the 12 is kind of a bastard fastener. Uh, if you look on the wall at Home Depot, it's going to go 6, 8, 10, quarter inch. No 12s. If you find 12s, most people are only going to have them in one inch variety. So I, I really started panicking then, and I went over to a, a large nationwide fastener company called Fastenal. And she goes, man, I can get you a bag of these. It's only going to cost you about five bucks. It'll take a couple of days. And I said, no, thanks. I got one coming. But just beware. Uh, if you're going to do this, uh, you're not going to be able to run up the hardware store and get this fastener. So I'm kind of disappointed. I called Boyd's first thing Monday morning, was on hold for a while, and then it clicked right into a message center, please leave a message. And uh, they never called me back. So I would have thought there would have at least been a disclaimer. You can kind of see how thick, well, maybe you can't, how thick this stock is in here where the receiver meets. I got to looking, and there's, there's enough room for them. They could have countersunk this another quarter inch and put in their, uh, their brass piece in there. Um, and I still want an explanation. I'm going to have to call back and find out what the deal is. But they should have put a disclaimer that, hey, you're going to need an inch and a quarter bolt or just supply an inch and a quarter bolt. I mean, they don't cost that much. So that was the problem for the delay. And that's why I went ahead and got everything else mounted up off camera and even got it bore sided so it's ready to go. So now all that's left after all that, get your uh, safety kind of centered here. And this is just, I can't tell you how happy I am with this stock other than the, the snafu on the on that uh, fastener. But uh, it is beautiful. Now if I can just get it in here, if I can get the safety to stay in place in the center so we can drop it in. And guys, this isn't a, this isn't a big gunsmithing project here. Anybody can do this. Evidently anybody but me. Because it has been just dropping in here. This is all about getting the safety in the center. Like I said, it's all about getting the safety in the center. There you are. Screw in your bolt. That's all you got to do. And we are ready to rock with our brand new 1022 race rifle. Auto bolt release is already built in to the kid single stage trigger along with your extended mag release. And I got to tell you, this thing, oh man, it's like butter. I did some work to one of my other 1022s, but it's, it's not anything like this. So next stop is going to be the range, and I'll let you know how it goes. Till next time, guys, be safe. Be aware, and uh, if you like what you see here, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Have a great day. See you down the road. Adios.